We're looking at 4.5 solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve equations using the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula will work on all quadratic functions, quadratic equations. So what we're going to do is we are going to interpret the discriminant, choose an efficient method for solving equations. So let's start at what the quadratic formula is. The solutions are of a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, are x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. So it looks like a lot, it's not too bad, but there are easier methods in some circumstances. So like factoring is easier. If it factors easily, that's easier than plugging it into the quadratic formula. So you wanna look to see if it will factor easily first, but we will get into that later. Today we're only focusing on using the quadratic formula. One thing to make sure you know is it has to be set equal to zero to use the quadratic formula. So looking at this first example, we want to set this equal to zero. Right now it's set equal to five. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna minus five from both sides of the equal sign. Um, and when we do that, the fives cancel to give us zero and negative two minus five gives us this negative seven. Then we're gonna write down our A value, our B value, and our C value. Now, no matter what order they're in, the A value is what is whatever number is in front of the X squared, which is three. The B value is whatever number is with the X, which is five, and the C value is the number all by itself at the end. So we're gonna substitute these into this quadratic for formula. So we've got X equals negative B. Our B is a five, so negative B would give us a negative five. Then we have our plus or minus, the square root here, and then B squared. B is equal to five. If I square that, I get 25, then minus four times my A value, which is three, and then times by my C value, which is negative seven, all over two times my A value. My A value is three, two times three gives us that six at the bottom. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug 25 minus four times three times negative seven into your calculator. And when you do that, you're gonna get 109. We want to, we want to get this number first and then plug it into the equation. So we, this plus or minus button does not exist in the calculator. So first you're gonna put in negative five plus the square root of 109 all over six, and you get 0.91. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that plus and change it to a minus, and you'll have negative five minus square root of 109 all over six. Okay, we'll, we'll look at this in a little more in depth, but if you need an example of how to do it all done for you, this one is will help you. Okay, so let's look at um, number one. If you're looking, here is our success criteria. These are kind of the steps we're gonna look at. Let's look at number one. So first thing we want to do is we wanna make sure it's in standard form, set equal to zero. This is set equal to zero, so we don't have to do anything with that first step. Now we're gonna identify our A, B, and C value. So our A equals the number in front of the X squared, which is four. Our B is the number in front of our X, which is negative eight. And our C is our number at the end, all on its own, which is one. So we're gonna write out our quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. So let's substitute our numbers in for that quadratic formula. x equals negative b. Our b is a negative eight. So if I have a negative b, it's going to be a negative negative eight, which is a positive eight. So whatever your b value is, this will make it the opposite sign. So if you have a minus eight, it becomes a positive eight. If you have a uh, positive eight, it becomes a negative eight, plus or minus the square root, b squared, we have a negative eight, 
a negative 8 times a negative 8 is a positive 64. This will always be a positive number here. Minus 4 times my A value, which is 4, times my C value, which is 1, all over 2 times my A value, which is 4. Now we want to simplify this number underneath the square root. So I'm going to look at this. I'm going to do this by hand, but you can plug it into your calculator. 4 times 4 is 16. So I'm going to take 64 and minus 16. I get 48. So I'm going to have 8 plus or minus the square root of 48 all over 4 times 2 is our 8. Now we're going to plug this into our calculator. The first time I put it in, I want to make sure I have a positive value. There's not a plus or minus button, so you have to do them separately. And I get my x is about 1.866, but if I round that to the nearest hundredth, that's going to put 1.87. To get my second value, I'm going to change that plus to a minus, and I will get x is about 0.13. So these would not factor because you get these long decimal answers. Um, so this was really the only way to do this is quadratic formula um, for, mo for all intents and purposes. Um, but it will work for all quadratics. My first step is to set it equal to zero. Now I want to get this k squared should be positive so I can check to see if it will factor. So I can't, uh, if it was going to factor, I would not want this over here. I would want it over here so it's positive. So I'm going to add 3k squared to both sides of the equal sign. Now one thing to keep in mind is the quadratic formula will work whether or not the k, the k squared value, your a value, is positive or negative. So it really doesn't matter which way you bring it, but if you were trying to factor first, which usually is easier, you would want to make that a positive value. So now we're going to write down our a value, our b value, and our c value. a is the number in front of k squared, which is 3. B is the number in front of the K, which is 6, and C is the number all alone at the end, which is negative 10. So we're going to write our quadratic formula, X equals negative B. B is our 6, so negative B would be negative 6 plus or minus the square root B squared. B is 6, B squared is 36 minus 4 times our A value, which is 3, times our C value, which is a negative 10. This is all over 2 times a. 2 times 3 is 6. Now we want to simplify what's underneath the square root. So I'm just going to type in 36 minus 4 times 3 times negative 10. And I get 156. So I have negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 156 all over 6. Now we're going to hit our fraction key and type in the rest. We're going to have negative 6. We put a plus value in, square root of 156, all over 6, which gives us our x is about 1.08. To get our second, second answer, we change that plus to a minus, and my x is going to be about negative 3.08. And that would give me my two answers there. On number three, I first want to set it equal to zero. I have a minus three here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three to both sides of the equal sign. I have 2x squared minus 5x plus three equals zero. Um, I could check to, in normal circumstances, I would check to see if this factored. I think it actually is going to factor, but all of these we're going to be using the quadratic formula, so we're just going to Write down our A, B, and C. You can factor this, but it will work with the quadratic formula as well. 2, negative 5, and 3 are our A, B, and C. We write down X equals negative B. Since our B is a negative 5, it changes to a positive 5. Negative and negative 5 is 5 plus or minus the square root. B squared, negative 5 times negative 5 is a positive 25. This number will always be positive minus 4 times our a value, which is 2, times our c value, which is 3, 
all over two times our a value, which is two. So let's go ahead and simplify. We have five plus or minus. If I take four times three is 12 times two is 24. 25 minus 24 is a one. So we're gonna have square root of one, which is just a one all over two times two is four. This is equal to five fourths plus or minus one fourth. This equals five fourths plus one fourth and five fourths minus one fourth. Five fourths plus one fourth is six fourths, which reduces to three halves. Five fourths minus one fourth is four fourths, which equals one. Since we got fractions here, or whole numbers, that tells me this would have factored for us. So we could have done it that way as well. Looking at number four, it's already set equal to zero. We're gonna write down our A, our B, and our C value. Our A is nine, B is six, C is one. We write down our quadratic formula, X equals negative B, B is six, so negative B would be negative six plus or minus the square root of b squared, six times six is 36, minus four times a value is nine, times c value is one, all over two times our a value, which is nine. Now we're gonna simplify what's underneath this square root. Nine times four is 36, 36 minus 36 is zero. So we have negative six plus or minus the square root of zero all over 18. Now I have negative six plus the square root of zero is zero all over 18, and negative six minus the square root of zero, which is zero all over 18. Now if I have negative six plus zero, I get negative six over 18, which is negative one third. Negative six minus zero is also negative six over 18, which equals negative one third. Now, if both of the answers are the same, there really is just one answer, and that would be a negative one third. You, would you wouldn't write it in twice, you would just write it in once. There's only one solution here. Okay, so here we've got a graph. Um, we're gonna use the graph and the given equations for problem one and two. Write and solve an equation to find the values of x so that f of x equals zero. Now this is a fancy way, this is saying a function where the variable of x is equal to zero, but a lot of times we can just substitute this to equal y. And we're gonna say that y is always equal to zero. This is a horizontal line straight across the x-axis. We are looking for where these two are, are uh, intersecting. So we want to know when the y is equaling zero. So we're going to write this equation with a zero in for the f of x. So zero equals negative two x squared plus five x plus four. Now notice my a value is negative. That will not work if you want to factor it, but it will work if you want to use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to just keep it there because I'm using this. It's the nearest hundredth. A, B, C, A is negative 2, B is 5, and C is a 4. X equals negative B. B is 5, so negative B would be negative 5 plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is 5 times 5 is 25 minus four times our a value is negative two times our c value, which is four, all over two times negative two is negative four. Now let's simplify what's underneath the square root. We do our timesing first. Four times four is 16. 16 times negative two. 16 times two is 32. The negative and the negative combine to be a positive. So this is going to be 25 plus 32. If I add those together, I get 57. So I'm gonna have negative five plus or minus the square root of 57 all over negative four. Hit your fraction key first. Okay, then we're gonna put in our positive version. We have negative five plus the square root of 57 all over negative four. Our first answer is going to be x is about negative 
four if we round to the nearest hundredth. To get our second answer, we change our plus sign to a minus sign and we get about 3.14. So those are gonna be our two answers that are on the graph. Now let's look at the graph and compare. If I look at the graph, I have it somewhere in between zero and negative one, which is we have a negative 0.64. So that looks like that's crossing about that. If we look over here, it's one, two, three, and just a tiny bit, that would be the 3.14 for our answer. On the second one, we're writing and solve an equation to solve the values of x so that f of x equals 5. So that, remember, is where we have y equals 5. If I write an equation, if I draw that in where my y is equaling 5, I'm going to have a horizontal line at 5. So my solution should be a little more than 0. So if I, for my x values, it's going to be somewhere just in between 0 and 1 and somewhere in between 2 and 3. So 2 point something and point something for our answers when we plug in this number. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, take our five and substitute it in for the f of x here, since f of x equals five. We're gonna write down that equation, five equals negative two x squared plus five x plus four. The problem with this one is it's not set equal to zero. So I, what I need to do is I need to minus five from both sides of the equal sign. Now, since we're using the quadratic formula, we it doesn't matter that we have a negative in the front of the x squared, but if we were trying to factor, we would need to bring all of this to the left side. But it since it doesn't matter, it's easier just to minus the 5 here. So 0 equals negative 2x squared plus 5x minus 1. Write down your a, b, and c value. a equals negative 2, b equals 5, and c equals negative 1. My x equals negative b, b is 5, so negative b would be negative 5 plus or minus the square root b squared, 5 squared is 25 minus 4 times a is negative 2 times c is negative 1 all over 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. We're going to simplify what's underneath the square root. 4 times 2 is 8 times 1 is 8. A negative times a negative is a positive times a negative is a negative. So we're going to have 25 minus 8. 25 minus 8 is 17. We have x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 17 all over a negative 4. We're going to plug that into our calculator. When we plug in our first, our positive version, we have x is about point. 2, 2. To get our second equation, we change our plus sign to a minus sign, and we get about 2.28, which if we look at our graph, remember we were looking for something in between 0 and 1, and something in between 2 and 3, which is 2.28. So that fits with what that graph was showing us. Now let's look at this uh, application problem. The equation h of t, so this is just saying height where our variable is time. So this is not h times t, it's just height. This a, The whole h of t is representing height. Um, models the height h it reached in t seconds by an object propelled straight up from the ground. So we have just a parabola here. When will the object reach a height of 70 feet? So the height would be 70. So what we're going to do in for the whole h of t, we're going to put 70 in. We're going to set it equal to 0 by minusing 70 from each side of the equal sign. Uh, we have 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 80t minus 70. We're going to write down our a, b, and c values. a is negative 16, b is 80, and c is negative 70. We write it into our quadratic equation. x equals negative b, negative 80, plus or minus the square root of b squared. 80 times 80 is 6,400 
minus 4 times negative 16 times c is negative 70 all over 2 times our a. 2 times negative 16 is negative 32. Now, th these are getting into bigger numbers. I'm going to go ahead and enter what is underneath the square root into the calculator. I get neg negative 80 plus or minus the square root of 1920 all over negative 32. I'm going to enter that into the calculator. I get x is about 1.13 seconds. So we're looking about when will the height be at 70. It's 1.13 seconds for the first one. If I change that plus to a minus, I get approximately 3.87 seconds. Now, if you look at this, one, one answer is when it's coming up and one answer is when it's coming down, which is why we have the two different answers here. Now you might have noticed how we did what was underneath the square root first. Now when the answer is nice, it doesn't matter. But sometimes if you got a negative number under that square root, you would get a math error on your calculator. For example, if I had the square root of negative nine, what would happen is if I was trying to find two things that multiplied to equal a negative nine, I could try three times three, but that equals a positive nine. But if I tried a negative three times a negative three, that would also equal a positive nine. There is not a number when I multiply it by itself that will give me a positive number here. So we need to dis use the discriminant to be able to tell if the quadratic equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero is a solution. Let's go ahead and circle the place in the quadratic formula where you find the discriminant. This is right underneath the square root there. You can use the discriminant to determine the number of real solutions and the number of x-intercepts of the graph of the related function. Now most of all of the ones that we did today had a positive value. And whenever you get a positive number underneath the square root, you are going to get two solutions. So let's look at a few different examples. We had a positive 17, we got two answers. We had a positive 57, we got two answers. Um, a po let's see here, positive, positive 48, positive 156, all of these have two answers. So there are two real solutions, and this has two x-intercepts. So these are the x-intercepts where that line is crossing the x-axis. Now we had one other example when the value of the discriminant was zero. This is up here on number four. When we have a zero in the discriminant, we get a positive zero and a negative zero, which keeps that first number the same. So what happens is the positive zero and the negative zero both end up being the same, and then we only have one real solution there. So we have one real solution and one x-intercept, and it, what happens is we only have one place where it's touching the x-axis. The other one is if we have a negative square root, and a negative square root, as we just talked about, has no real number. Like if I have the square root of negative nine, there's no real number when you multiply it by itself that will give you a negative nine. So there are no x-intercepts. And so what this does is it, it doesn't ever cross the x-axis. It'll look something like this or something like this where it comes up but not quite able to reach that x-axis. There's no intersection between those. So we're gonna look at our just our discriminant. The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. And we're gonna write down our a, b, and c. a is one. Now, if there's not a number in front of one of the variables, the x squared, it's a one. Uh, b is going to be a negative eight. 
and the C is uh, A16. So B squared is negative 8 times negative 8 is positive 64 minus 4 times A is 1 times C is 16. When I times these three out, 4 times 16 is 64 times 1 is 64, I get 64 minus 64, which gives me a 0 here. This would give me one, uh, one real solution and one x-intercept. And you can look at that from our chart. If you get a 0 when you find the discriminant, there will be one real solution and one x-intercept. Looking at number nine, notice we have a negative three. We need that to be a zero first. So I'm gonna add three to both sides of the equal sign. Eight P squared plus eight P plus three equals zero. I'm gonna write down my A, B, and C value. My A is a eight, my B is an eight, and my C is a three. So we're only looking at how many there are. So we just need to do the quadratic, the we need to use the discriminant of the quadratic formula, which is b squared minus 4ac. Eight, b is 8, so 8 squared is 64, minus 4 times our a value, which is 8, times our c value, which is 3. So I'm going to times all of the end part. 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 8 is 96, 64 minus 96 is a negative number. I don't even need to know what that negative number is. If I get any sort of negative number where this is these times together is bigger than the first number, it's going to be negative, so this is no real solution and no x-intercepts.